Well, Janine, you and I both know that we're living through some interesting times. Some, and by interesting, I suppose I mean fairly dark and worrying times. Um, there does seem to be events about to occur in the short term, and I want to get your opinion on exactly what's going on because you've been monitoring and observing and researching these matters for a long time. So you're some, something of an expert and, and an authority on the matter. Can you give us some details on what you think is going to present itself to the, the general public across the globe in, in the short term? Okay, in the short term, yeah. As we've been um, looking at those event, that event lineup that I had on the board, um, Robert, I can start to sort of break things down a little bit. Um, the first most immediate event um, that people are all watching is the 24th of September and today <laughs> happens to be the 24th of September in Sydney, Australia. We're Eastern Standard Time, of course, and so we're a day ahead of the Western world. So that day will roll around and very likely it will be tomorrow when this event happens. And by the time you get to watch this, you will be, you will already know what has happened. At the moment, we're on the other side of it. But I'd like to share a little bit of insight that might even um, help to explain what does happen. Um, so my first question was, why is everybody looking at the 24th of September? In fact, why has Frederick Merz, the German opposition leader, um, stated this 24th of September 22 is going to be a day where we will, which we will remember? And we're going to say about this day in the future that I remember where I was. Now, the types of events like that, Robert, for us have usually been things like 9-11, you know, the Queen's death, her funeral, um, not really the Queen's death, I don't think that's been that memorable, but I know 9-11 certainly was. It's a day where suddenly your whole perception of reality um, is um, at uh, attacked, your whole sense of safety is attacked. So. What could this possibly mean? What could be significant about this date? Why are they looking at this date? Well, the first thing that I noticed was that it just happens to be exactly seven years to the day or to the date, probably not the day, but seven years to the very date. So in other words, the mirror date um, seven years earlier from this date is the 24th of the 9th 2015. This just happened to be the day that was the, what I believe to be the abomination of desolation sign that has absolutely proved to be. Um, we've looked at events before that 35 and a half years and a similar event occurred. We've looked at events that have happened after three and a half years exactly. Um, and so this template to my mind is very clearly playing out and a lot of other people as well that can see it. And so um, what is fascinating about this date is that it just happens to be the 6th of Elul on the Hebrew calendar. Now, the 6th of Elul on the Hebrew calendar just happens to be the date that has every Shemitah year, so every 7th year, there has been a stock market crash as has been explained and explored um, to the absolute nth degree by Jonathan Kahn in his book The Shemitah and in his book The Harbinger. The Harbinger uh, introduces the concept as he looks at um, how events with 9-11 mirrored uh, an attack on Israel, so it mirrored uh, ancient historical events and then he, in the Shemitah, begins to look at this seventh year concept and how it seems to affect the stock market. And so what's so fascinating here is that this is not just seven years after this very significant event where the Pope went to the US Congress with Lord Dodo, so with the New World Religion, and basically united church and state, united religion and the state, which is as you were bringing up to me before privately, um, Robert, you asked the question about um, uh, you know the concept of religion. Do you want to do you want to um, raise that? Well, <clears throat> to me, it is important to have separation of church and state, which we do have in the Western world. 
but then there will be other religions, for example, amongst some proponents of the Islamic faith who will say, well, God's law overrides state law. God's law overrides local law. Local law, state law is always going to be subordinate mm. to God's law. Yeah. That is a belief, I suppose, that people may well be entitled to, but it is somewhat incompatible mm. depending on what part of their world they're in. Mm. And it's okay if you hold that belief privately, but if your religion happens to take control of the state and it begins to enforce it on people who don't have those beliefs, you don't have religious freedom anymore. People don't have freedom of conscience, they won't have freedom to practice their belief and they won't have freedom to speak. And um, so that's the reason why the foundation of our whole uh, Western civilization has been founded on separation of the powers, which began in 1532 and 1533 <clears throat> when um, King Henry VIII, I believe it was, separated from Rome at that point. And that was the beginning of this, uh, it was actually the start of the Protestant Reformation. And um, so, yeah, um, so I'm trying to remember how we got there yes so that event that happened on the 29th of the 9th 2015 with the pope going to america presenting his encyclical laudato si which is the um call for um compliance with the new world religion that's been agreed on by the world parliament of religions and that contains in it um the mark of authority the vatican papal mark of authority uh, which is the call for Sunday worship they consider that their mark of authority to rule men under sin or to rule the world and so this is you know hugely significant and yes so it happens to be this date happens to be the 6th of Elul which is the date on um, 2001 when the stock market crashed it is the date seven years later on the Shemitah year of 2008 when the global financial crisis occurred and there was a stock market crash and again 15 years later in 2015 again there was a stock market crash in that Shemitah year and so now we're coming to the end of seven Shemitahs which is actually so seven lots of seven years and we're in the final Shemitah year starting this year and this date actually the 24th of the 9th is the last day of the sixth month the next day the 25th of the 9th will roll over into the start of the seventh month which is the feast of trumpets or as the jews call it rosh hashanah and that date will begin the seventh month and all of the you know enormously significant events that will occur with that so very likely we're going to see some kind of something to do with the economy but what somebody has pointed out which is very fascinating is that this date happens to be a sunday it's actually not falling on a weekday so nothing can happen with the stock market so what could it be um, the vatican have recalled all of their money to the vatican bank by the 30th of september and so most people are indicating that economic collapse is being signaled by the vatican so could it be a nuclear attack could it be an attack of some kind from outer space it just happens to be fascinating that data is being trialed where nasa um, excuse me, are involved in pummeling an incoming asteroid. So, and I think that's on Monday. I think that would be on Monday our time, which would be, yeah, the 24th Western time. So something, uh, something is in the wind.